Well, number one, I think you need to do it very regularly, and that's practice, almost like keeping a diary. You need to be on it, uh, writing about something every day, either, you know, even just for practice, because I think that's the number one thing where you will get your confidence and you will get your own style and your own voice by doing it more regularly. And I guess the other thing really is that, like, the idea of writing in the traditional way as of being a writer or a journalist is kind of gone in a way, you know, like you're better off thinking about yourself in terms of multimedia and pla multi-platform stuff because it's very hard to exist and make a living um, as just a writer, a traditional writer, just for a newspaper. Um, I've done bits of that in the past, but like uh, through the website I've had, I think really having your own thing is a major uh, thing that I'd work towards if anyone was doing it. Have your own site. Um, a place where everything uh, exists, everything you're writing, you can bring it in. Um, I think it's really good to have a portfolio of that way. And by actively keeping it up to date and participating, I think that's one of the main things. And then the other part of it, obviously, is like social media stuff. You know, like people see things before they read them or hear them these days. So, you know, you got to think about how it's going to be presented. If there is a brand involved, is there? You know, what is the look going to be? How? Like these are all now practical considerations we all have to have as writers which we didn't have before um, so I really think you have to think about the overall picture in terms of how you're going to do it uh, what you're going to look like how you're going to present yourself and um, so it's more than just your your message and uh, your commentary it's a bit of everything really the four things that I think are the most important are um, you choose your strategy then choose your topic choose your audience and then choose a venue. So what do I mean by strategy? Strategy means you need to define your own expectations before you set out on a project. You haven't even chosen the topic yet, but what, what's your goal for your project? Is your goal to become an influencer where you want to be sort of a, known as a general expert and authority on the topic? Maybe it's your own music and, and your own brand, then of course you're, you're selling yourself and you need to uh, make sure that everything you write is there to improve or, or grow your brand. But on the other hand, if you're trying to impress or appeal to an institution or a single individual, let's say you're applying for a grant or let's say you're applying to um, uh, begin your postgraduate studies, let's say that you are applying for a job or even if you're just a student and you're writing an essay in a module and it's a single person, it's not your brand then that you're appealing to. It's the brand of the person who you're, who you're addressing or who the, the ultimate um, person reviewing your material is going to be. So you're going to play to their brand and keep your writing in line with their brand. Next, you're going to choose your topic. Be your own advocate. Uh, and it's an advocate. So you're speaking positively about something. Uh, anybody can be a critic, and everyone is a critic. Uh, the best and, and the easiest way to convince your audience is if you're so proud and supportive for your strategy and your brand, rather than saying, oh, I'm responding to something else. Uh, playing the defense is not going to win your game. Next, then you're going to choose your target audience, and in this case, you might say that you're appealing just to yourself or you're appealing to a broad group of speakers, uh, a broad group of readers. But the question that I think is, is one of the most important ones is, do you belong to the group that you're addressing? Are you speaking for someone or are you speaking of someone? I wanted to read a quote here as an example for if you are an outsider and you're speaking for someone, uh, there's a trans uh, composer performer, Alex Temple. This is a quote. How do you get trans people to come to classical concerts? By creating social environments where we can feel at ease, by not treating us as guests in someone else's world, bringing us in as artists and curators and designers, not just as audience members. By recognizing that while outreach is valuable, it's nothing compared to inclusion. So when you're speaking for and of someone, consider that before you even choose the topic, kind of broadly, if that you want to focus your audience. And the last thing, as I said, was choose your publication or venue. 
you can definitely write on the same topic for multiple venues, but then the, you have to sort of back up to the three previous stages and figure out, okay, how am I going to angle this? Well, if, you're all, if you're writing about women or you're writing about your own music or you're writing about uh, trans composers or opera or whatever it is, if it's Twitter, you only have a few characters, as opposed to if you're going to a publicist, they don't have enough time to read anything, so you really have to focus. So my tips about writing about music are pretty much the same about writing or storytelling in general. Because in some ways, there's similar ideas about telling a story. The big first word for me is always why. Why are you telling the story? And then what's the story? and critically, who are you telling it to? And they define everything from that. So the why factor, so whether it's you're writing to tell your own story, or you're writing to be an advocate for your genre, for your composition, for your work, for your music, define that first, and really own your own story. And um, by that I mean, particularly in a digital age, and most musicians and most writers, composers know this, is use the tools. Don't wait for other people to offer their platforms to you to tell your story. Create your own space. We're in an environment where, with very little effort, we can have a digital platform ourselves. We can create our own narrative in audio, in photographs, in text. And social media, while it gets a bad press, quite rightly, a lot of the time, is really powerful for every musician and composer in this field to be, in a way, in control of their own storytelling, using themselves, using the power of their own voice, but also to shape the way other people perceive them, rather than us waiting for the reviewers, the critics, the writers, the journalists, always to be the conduit. We're in an environment, and I say that as somebody who spent a big chunk of my life as a journalist, and I work as a producer, but realistically, in this age, be in control of your story, and before somebody else tells it, tell it yourself. I think as a musician, um, you have to be very brave about how you communicate um, your message. Um, what I've experienced, I suppose, with musicians that I know is that they're very brilliant, wise, insightful souls, and they have a way of seeing things that the status quo often can't see. So it takes a lot of courage to communicate that. Don't assume that the people in general will understand what you're trying to communicate through your ly lyrics. You know, the music can be very abstract. Um, ethereal um, art form. So yeah, I would think I'd really recommend putting yourself in the, in the shoes of who your audience are. And if you've got a really big why, go for it. Just speak your truth, you know. And in, to the writing process, um, my background's actually in copywriting uh, in the advertising industry, which is a very strange place for a socialist. But anyway, I got out eventually. But I've, t I've taken those skills with me. And I would really say, go through the process of writing your why out, maybe a long format. Write it as a, an 800 word press release. Then write it as a really punchy two, three lines. If you can nail it in one line, fantastic. But expand on that too. Don't just, it's really, I think it's really important for musicians to, to be brave and to stand up to your management as well. If they're trying to put you in a box, we're seeing this time and time again. I don't think musicians need management. I think they need PAs, to be honest. And lucky the PA that gets to work with some of the top musicians, really, because they're being too pinned in. They're being too trapped um, in terms of their messaging. And we're seeing that with popular culture. It's so diluted. And uh, I just think there's so much extraordinary wisdom and depth in musicians, you know, and in, in artists. And that's not communication to the popular culture. We're not seeing that come through enough. So I think um, for musicians as well, to really take the helm of popular culture, um, you've got great uh, inspiration from looking at history. Look, if you look at the past, every major socio-political cultural change has been sparked and led by the artists. Often the politicians and the military will try and take the credit for it. We saw that with the 1960 centenary, but actually if you look at the 1916 rising, it was the artists, the poets, the musicians, the mystics, the masters, the, you know, the fine artists, they, they led the movement. And then eventually the rest of culture caught up and sometimes they just never catch up. But um, to really take the helm, I think, and to be brave in leading the forefront as well. So that means 
yeah, restructuring how you do things and, and who has power over you and who you give power to. Um, but we're seeing it time and again. This is a good, good it's a universal truth. Musicians, the artists, they lead culture. And to, to really take that bull by the horns and run with it, you know, don't be shy about it. The first thing would be to actually write about the music, not write about anything else. This is the most important thing, to focus on the music and to find the words to describe the music. So not to write about secondary aspects like commercial success or how, um, how something is doing in the public eye or what other people are saying about it or what other people think about it, but what do you actually think about the music when you listen to it and how do you actually describe it? So to focus on the music, that is really, really the important thing and try and push everything else away. Um, that would be the first thing. The second thing, I think, when writing a review, and this is something that happens a lot when reviews are submitted to the Journal of Music, is not to give the game away in the first two lines about how you felt about a concert. Because readers read reviews to find out what a, th what a writer thinks. So you want them to read to the end. Otherwise, all your work's gone to waste. So to not give the game away, don't tell them what you think in the first couple of lines and hold back, hold back your opinion. So what does that mean then? That means, I suppose my, another tip would be, that doesn't mean you just insert lots of filler and then give them your opinion at the end. One of the most important things I think about music writing is to actually document what is happening. You can't see music, I know it's written down, but you can't actually see the music. You can't taste it, you can't touch it, you can't smell it. So your words could be the only public record of a musical experience for posterity. That's a big responsibility. I think that's important. That's something that's important to me, to actually accurately record what actually happened. That would be my top tip.